Hey guys, Vargan Templar here with a brief political history of post-war Japan. Now, I don't know as much about Japan as some of the other countries, but seeing as most people probably don't know anything about it, um, this is probably still productive. So we're starting off here in 1942, and you'll see why I'm able to do all, all of post-war Japan in one video in a minute. So in 1942, um, all, all, force, all political parties were forced to merge together into one of the LARPiest but most awesomely named parties of all time, the Imperial Rule Assistance Association, or as I like to call it, Imperial Rule Association, uh, which is just an awesome name. So it was, it was basically the Japanese version of fascism. So it was a far-right Japanese nationalist party uh, founded by the Imperial Way faction. So it was um, Japanese nationalism, Japanese militarism, Showa statism, para-fascism, state Shinto, and it was far-right with its official religion being Shintoism. Um, Shintoism is, is very important for the far-right in Japan. Because uh, Japan's one of the few countries on earth that still has basically a form of paganism. Um, I mean paganism in kind of a technical sense, as kind of a, a folk religion of the masses that's innately tied to the nation's um, ethnic character. So in, in Shintoism, uh, the emperor is a descendant of the sun god Emiretsu, and so the emperor is literally a god. Um, he was forced to declare that he was not divine by... The Americans in the aftermath of World War II, but they kind of subtly reneged on this because he asked if he could uh, had permission to worship his ancestors, and MacArthur gave him permission, and then he went and worshipped at the temple of the sun goddess Amaretsu. So he basically said, "I'm a god," and the far right in Japan to this day believe that he, the Japanese emperor is a god. So Shintoism being the religion of the state and reestablishing the divinity of the emperor is a, a core goal of Japanese nationalists. So we'll get into the history of modern Japan in a minute. So, um, after World War II, um, America forced a democracy on them and uh, demanded that the Imperial Rule Party be formally disbanded, um, which it was. Uh, in the aftermath of World War II, we saw a very chaotic period. Um, the first election was one run by the right-wing Liberal Party. Now, it's important to keep in mind, whenever you see Liberal Party in Japan, liberal means right wing in Japan. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, so liberal party uh, doesn't really say what they were. Um, they merged with the Democratic Party to form the Liberal Democratic Party. Okay, yeah. So they were a left. They were a right wing political party. So the first election post war, uh, the right won with a small percentage of the vote. Um, I'm not really sure what the Progressive Party is, but um, it says here that the Liberals and Progressives um, formed a coalition to govern under a Liberal PM. So broadly speaking, Japan had a right-wing government post-war, center-right. Then we head into the Japanese election of 1947. Uh, as you can see, it was kind of a hung parliament or a uh, minority government. So that immediately led to a follow-up election in which the Liberal Party... Um, lost some votes, but we saw the emergence of the Democratic Party, uh, which was um, basically kind of a, a, another right-wing party. Um, it says here kind of a faction of the um, Liberal Party. Uh, the Democratic Party will become important later on, um, as we'll see. But yeah, so we have a kind of a right-wing party, kind of a centrist to right-wing party. Um, we have the left and the far left. But this is still, this is only two years after World War II. It's it's not that um, that important. Um, the election j dramatically changes after this. This was the last election under the old constitution of Japan. I just show these for completeness sake. So now we kind of have the first real election in Japanese history. Uh, the Japanese, sorry, of modern post-war Japan history, because they had elections before the war. Uh, the election of 1949, in which we see the Liberal Party emerge as more or less its, its modern state. It will eventually um, become the Liberal Democratic Party, but this is really kind of the first modern Japanese election. And we see the right win a um, massive, uh, win a landslide. Japan is a first-past-the-post system. So winning 40% of the vote in a first-past-the-post system is, is massive. 
Uh, the, interestingly enough, Japan has one of the strongest communist parties in the world. Um, they generally speaking get about 10 to 15 percent of the vote. Um, I think that's just due to the unique nature of Japan. Japan's kind of it, it's a country where I could see communism actually kind of working. Um, just because of collect the people there are naturally collectivist. Um, they naturally um, kind of share. They have a sense of honor and duty. The people really can be trusted to not do shit. Um, like, not to steal from one another. So I can kind of understand the appeal of communism. A lot of East Asian countries don't tend to be very free market. I mean, we think they are, but they, they tend to be very state-involved, very communitarian. There's a whole thing called Asian values. So I can understand the appeal of communism. Then we had the election of 1952, where we get another new party. I don't know, they changed their name for some reason. Then we get this bizarre phenomenon of the leftist and rightist socialist party of japan uh i don't know what that's about i have looked that up before i think one's just more left-wing and one's more moderate it's very okay so the... so this was like a social democratic party um whereas the um this was a full-on marxist party okay so that confirms sorry it's there japan went through a lot of changes post-war so these are kind of confusing so it says here that these were both conservative um so yeah so this party's right wing and this party's right wing so the right in japan using that metric uh even from the post-war period consistently won about um 60 to 70 percent of the vote every election and a vast majority of the seats so um, that being said, let's go to the next election of 1953. And here we have pretty much the same result. And you're starting to see why I can just do um, Japan in one, one or two videos. Um, okay, so the Liberal Party won another majority. Or no, not majority, but close to majority. They won a lot. Um, we have the Liberal Party separatists. Um, so yeah, so the Liberals and Democrats succeed in creating another center-right coalition. Then we head into the election of 1955, where the Democratic Party succeeded in winning, um, which was a right-wing political party. So I think what happened was the previous Democratic Party became the Reform Party and then became the Democratic Party again. Uh, so they won, the Liberal Party came in second, and then we had a couple minor left-wing parties that were were functionally irrelevant. So yes, the two main parties at the moment are Liberal and Democratic. So next election we get the Liberal Democratic Party, and we get a Socialist Party. Uh, the Japan Socialist Party, which doesn't exist today. So the right got around 60% of the vote. Um, that's weird. Those totals don't really add up. Anyways, it's not that important. Um, yes, yeah, so the right got about 60% of the vote, and the left got about 35% of the vote. Yeah, I guess that does add up. Um, so we get the Liberal Democratic Party of Japan. Uh, so I guess we'll talk a bit about them. The Liberal Ge Democratic Party of Japan is pretty far to the right of most right uh most mainstream right-wing parties um their ideology is conservatism liberal conservatism japanese nationalism anti-communism and social conservatism uh they have swung further to the right these days um there's basically three main factions within them there's the right-wing liberals are kind of socially conservative um defense industry um uh, etc um so I believe that they're kind of um, more kind of like working class and rural. Okay, so there's like a working class rural group. There's the business white collar bureaucrat group who wants... Um, and then there's like a, a nationalist party. Um, so essentially they are just kind of a... They represent a broad, broad swath of Japanese society who want Japan to remain Japan, um, who represent a desire to revise the post-war constitution, uh, to rearm, 
Um, but in general, they, they support... Um, generally speaking, they support government intervention in the economy. Uh, the Japanese miracle was not a free market exercise. It was done through a combination of protectionism, um, government providing liquidity, um, private-public um, partnerships, investments in technology. Um, the Japanese government is very involved in the economy. Uh, what the Japanese government tends to do is they have, I think they're called Zaibutsu, or Zibitsu, or however they're called. They have a few massive conglomerates, like five or six corporations that control most of the economic output in Japan. And the Japanese government has a very tight um, leash on them. So the Japanese government will pass legislation or, or bills or provide funding for them to fulfill their, their jobs. And I think um, Mitsubishi's one, and I think Honda's one, and Toyota's one. And these, these companies all have massive other divisions of stuff that they produce, and they have their own banks, etc. So they have these massive um, institutions, and the Japanese government supports them, and in return, they've made Japan one of the, the wealthiest, strongest countries on earth through a private-public cooperation. Um, so Japan has a lot of intervention in the economy. It doesn't really have much of a welfare state, from my understanding, compared to other countries. Um, other than that, they just tend to be pretty nationalistic. Uh, they support revising history textbooks in Japan to make them more patriotic. Uh, they support socially conservative policies opposing things like gay marriage, etc. Overall, they're just kind of a fairly standard right-wing country, but with kind of a corporatist interventionist economics uh, that are rather different than what we pursue in the West. They kind of resemble very strongly um, pre-World War to um, American economics. Uh, they resemble the German economic model and the Scandinavian model a fair amount, and in particular um, Singapore and the Chinese economy. So that is the Democratic Liberal Democratic Party of Japan. I love them to bits. I wish we had one here. I just talk about them because they are, they are the most important political force in Japan, Japanese history. So, then we had the election of 1960. And the Liberal Democrats win another landslide. And they will continue winning landslides with, I think, one interruption. Yep. Um, we have an opposition party, but they're essentially irrelevant. So we'll just keep going. Liberal Democrats win another election. Uh, this is when we get the Kamito party that forms. Um, let's see here. It's sometimes centrist, also sometimes center-left, but is also socially conservative. I believe they are largely dependent on, I think it's a sect of Buddhism, um, let's see, the new Kamido party. Yeah, they are, they are, um, cause you know how there's Christian democracy and Islamic democracy, they are Buddhist democracy. So they're a socially conservative, um, party, which is based on a Japanese movement called Soka Geki. Let's see, what is this? A uh, new religious movement um, based on... Is that Pure Land Buddhism? Uh, Lotus Buddhism. Okay, so anyways, it, it's based on a, a new religious movement in Japan. Um, a form of Buddhism. So it is a right-wing conservative party. And since its inception, it pretty much just... Um, is in coalition with the uh, Liberal Democrats, and it's basically a a wing of their party. Um, it's 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 basically composed of people who are from this religious movement who support the policies of the Liberal Conservative Party. There's not a huge difference between them. So we get the second of Japan's right wing parties. So now we have the right in Japan once more, consistently winning over fifty percent of the vote. Uh, we had in the Japanese general election of 1969. Uh, the Liberal Democrats continue to just wipe the floor with everything that moves. Nothing's really changing. As always, keep in mind an unusually strong Communist Party. Liberal Democrats win another landslide victory. Uh, we have some other random right-wing political parties that periodically pop up from time to time. Things will get a bit more complicated once we move a bit closer to the present. Um, another Liberal Democratic Party. 
victory, and then we have a couple other, oh, okay, random minor parties, not really important. Um, 1980, another victory for the Liberal Democrats. 1983, another victory for the Liberal Democrats. 1986, another victory for the Liberal Democrats. 1990, another victory for the Liberal Democrats. 1993, um, a coalition of every other party uh, managed to briefly dethrone the Liberal Democrats, including some right-wing parties. Yeah, including some right-wing parties, um, I think, joined this. With the purpose of briefly removing the... Um, yeah, there's some conservative parties who joined. So the only time the right, the left won was by getting literally everyone else in society together. Um, yeah, there's like some right-wing parties that joined this. <laughs> uh, so they got every other party together and um, ran the election, and even then they barely managed to win. They won, but it, it was a very closely fought election. And then in 1996... Um, the Liberal Democrats won re-election. Uh, we have the New Frontier Party, which is social liberalism, neoconservatism, neoliberalism. That's interesting. It's not even that left wing. Um, New Party Harbinger. What the hell? That's random. So then we go into the 2000 election where the Liberal Democrats win once again. Uh, let's see here. Yep. So Liberal Democrats... Win re-election. Uh, did it say that they won? No, they didn't win enough for majority. Let's see. Uh, who's the ruling coalition? Um, I don't know. This confuses me. How this is set up. Oh, because... Okay, sorry. It's confusing because that, that was a... Um, they're using red for the right and blue for the left. That's very confusing. They head into the Japanese election of 2003, where the Liberal Democrats won again. Uh, this is kind of... okay. Uh, and they are coalition with New Kamido and these other Randys. So they're pretty much... They pretty consistently get the um, majority of the votes. The left gets a fair amount of the votes... Um, but they aren't even that left wing, center to center left, centrism, social liberalism. The opposition in Japan isn't even that left wing. And the Communist Party, I don't think, is very socially liberal. Let's just look at the Communist Party for a minute. I think the Japanese Communist Party is pretty... Okay, um, let me just long glance at this. Um... Okay, they, they do support. Okay, they do support. Oh, they only support uh, civil unions. Okay, so they're to the right of most Western conservative parties. Okay, so, um, yeah, the, the Communist Party doesn't support gay marriage. They just support civil unions. Okay, so there we go. They, they aren't even that left-wing, the Communist Party. Isn't. They went into the election of 2005, where the Liberal Democrats win another landslide. Then we had the election of 2009, where the Democratic Party briefly manages to win. Um, this is also due to uh, the the um, appearance of a lot of new right wing parties uh, that come onto the screen, and there's a lot of vote splitting that occurs in the um, election of um, 2009. Then we went into the election of 2012, in which the Liberal Democrats were returned to power. Um, keep in mind they've only lost two elections uh, since Japan lost World War II. So they've been in power well over 50 years. Uh, most of that time un uninterrupted. So Liberal Democrats regain power, and we see New Comito continue to get some. We also see a lot of other right-wing parties um, come to power. The um, the Liberal Democrat, uh, the Democratic Party, which is left-wing but not that left-wing, sees its share of the vote sink to about 20%. And we see a lot of other right-wing parties emerge. The far right-wing Japanese Nationalistic Japan Restoration Party shows up during this time period. We still have New Kamido, which is also socially conservative. We have Your Party, which was kind of right-wing. It was kind of like a 
right libertarian party so it's also right wing we have the tomorrow party which is uh i can't really determine what this is it says anti-nuclear so i'm guessing it's left wing but it doesn't really look that left wing uh then we have new what the hell's new party daichi oh another conservative party okay so yeah we had the appearance of the powerful japan restoration party which did very well once again, keep in mind the left, the right is um, in this election got, let's see here, uh, what was the final polling, final numbers. Um, the, the coalition who won got 44% of the vote. So the right is consistently getting about 60% of the vote. Then we had the election of 2014 where they held a, a re-election and it, 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 it came about with um, a couple new political parties the innovation party which is a japanese nationalism social conservatism economic liberalism so a a right-wing party a right-wing nationalist party uh emerged uh we also have the future generations party which is also far right um but yeah so and then we also have pe what the hell's people's life um right wing i guess a left wing i guess but overall, um, we have a country that's exceedingly right-wing. And um, the Liberal Democratic Party continues to drift uh, rightward. Um, the current people who run it are, are um, all part of a right-wing nationalist organization. Actually, I believe um, the majority of members of, Parl of the Liberal Democratic Party and most of the cabinet members are part of some anti-feminist... Uh, right-wing nationalist political party. Uh, in particular, the current Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is um, particularly right-wing. Uh, he describes himself as a right-wing Japanese nationalist, and his goal at the moment is to remove war guilt and the stigma Japan suffered in the post-war period, um, to rebuild a strong Japan, and to... Um, roll back a lot of uh, the feminist and other socially liberal things that happened in the post-war period uh, while also increasing Japan's birth rate and remilitarizing. So in other words, he's he's my kind of guy. I wish we had a Shinzo Abe in, in, in a Western country. He kind of reminds me a bit of um, uh, Victor Orban in Hungary. So heading into the next election, which is not for a long time, uh, it seems like the Liberal Democrats will probably just win again. Uh, there's a lot of people who are very much against the current system and don't want to vote, but there's really no one else to vote for. Uh, looking at the next election, the left only has 15% of the polls now. Uh, in this election, the left only got like 20% of the vote. Um, I guess 30% if you had the Communist Party, but they're kind of randies. So... Overall, I think what to take away from this is Japan is one of the most right-wing countries on Earth. Uh, the right, and not just like dildo right, but like the actual right, has won elections pretty consistently since the end of World War II. Uh, the only of the two times it's been dethroned, one time was largely due to vote splitting, and it barely lost even then. And the second time was due to a coalition of every other political force in society rising up against it, including many right-wing parties. So that is a brief political history of Japan. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Arvid Templar signing in.